children in the previous chapters you learned that how laws are made in our country but how are these laws implemented on ground for the ease of implementation of laws throughout various states the states are divided into a number of districts each district has its own set of government officers that ensure that laws are implemented properly today we will learn about how the various officers at the district level function and what are their duties and responsibilities we will particularly discuss the nature of job of the district magistrate a district magistrate is normally a member of the indian administrative service ias and is the highest functionary of the state government at the district level a district magistrate is also known as a collector as a district administrator as a district commissioner and as a district development officer in earlier days a collector's main duty was the collection of government's due and land revenues and thus he was known as the collector the most important duty of the dm is to look after the administration of the district and ensure the successful implementation of central and state government development and welfare policies through various channels but today his duties have expanded and the powers have been enlarged the functions of a district magistrate can be summarized as follows first maintenance of law and order in a district in coordination with the superintendent of police who head the police force in the district second district land administration including the maintenance of land records calculation and collection of land revenue and other public dues he also has to deal with disputes arising out of land records and management of public lands and properties third ensuring the power disbursement of old age pension widows pension stipends to physically handicapped persons workmen's compensations matters rehabilitations of displaced persons or those affected by a natural calamity fourth the dm also looks after the control regulation and distribution of food and civil supplies and essential commodities fifth ensuring the proper observance of process of elections held in the district right from the registration of voters to the declaration of results of elections sixth supervision of the urban local bodies dm ensures the successful implementation of various development and anti poverty measures for the urban poor seventh in the event of a natural calamity the dm has to coordinate the activities of the various departments and takes proper steps to reduce sufferings of the people eighth The DM also works as the district public grievances officer and is responsible for looking into the complaints of the common people and ensures the proper and corruption free functioning of all departments in his district. Let us understand the nature of the job of a DM with an example of an imaginary district and its district magistrate. Here is an imaginary district of Nallavaram. It is divided into various subdivisions known as mandals. The district magistrate here is Mrs. Manisha Nangle. Manisha Nangle has to organize a meeting of the officers from various departments in her office in which she discusses the progress done in each department. She goes through a pile of files to see that whether the various departments under her are functioning properly or not. In the evening, she meets the people of her district and learns about their problems. One day, some farmers from Mallepalli Mandal came to meet Manisha Nangle. They wanted their loans to be waived because that year their crops had failed due to the absence of irrigation. They also wanted to get some repair work done at the tank bunds in their village. Manisha Nagle expressed her inability 
to waiver the loans as their village was not on the state list of drought affected areas. She suggested that they must meet the MLA of their area for solving this problem. She however assured them that she would look into the matter of the tangment repair through the concerned department. One day, the DM got a phone call from Narsapet Mandal that a ginning mill in that area had caught fire and the cotton stored inside it was completely burnt. She went to Narsapet with the superintendent of police and the civil surgeon. Nagli announced a compensation of 10,000 rupees to the owners of the houses that were burned down due to the fire in the mill. She also promised to inquire how did the fire start in the mill and investigate the entire matter. She also visited the injured in the hospital and announced a relief of 20,000 rupees to the injured people. On her way back, she visited the municipal officer and pointed out that there was encroachment on the streets of the route to the mill and that is why fire brigade took time to reach the venue. She asked the concerned department to take action and get the unauthorized shops removed from the streets. As you know, Nallavaram is divided into several mandals. A group of villages together forms a mandal. Just like the district headquarters, there are different offices at the mandal level also. There are mandal officers of development, revenue, education and agriculture etc. The revenue officers MRO and VRO are responsible to keep the land records. All land in the country is measured and this information is kept safely at various levels. These documents come in handy when there is a dispute between two landowners regarding the boundaries etc. When someone buys or sells the land, he has to get this information registered in the concerned offices with the maps, sale deed of the land and other important documents. The maps are also kept for uncultivated or forest land so that if there is any unauthorized encroachment on the land, the culprits may be evicted out. How laws are implemented? Let us understand how various laws are implemented by another interesting example. All of us are aware of the importance of saving the groundwater. It is very important for us to preserve it. But still today, people dig bore wells up to the depth of 1500 feet or more, which is unauthorized. So, to prevent this, Andhra Pradesh Water, Land and Trees Protection Act was passed in 2002. The main features were Permission from Mandal Revenue Officer to drill a new well or bore well Specific distance to be ensured between two wells to avoid unnecessary competition. Steps to prevent rainwater wastage. Industrial units to have wastewater treatment plants. Protection of drinking water. Tree plantation. No cutting of trees without permission. After the law was passed, government formed an authority to implement the act. It was known as the Water, Land and Trees Protection Authority. To implement any act, various departments of the government should work together. I am sure the topic was interesting. Till we meet next time with a new module, take care and happy learning.